Finally, after years of waiting, approximately one and a half by now, we have access to the Kampf Panzer 50 ton. Or at least we have a chance to get access to the tank, because obviously it's going to be in crates, and those crates are crazy expensive. Take a look at that. Three crates for 10 euros. In my opinion, it's one of the highest priced tank to be ever released in crates. And yeah, for 14 crates, you will have to take 90 euros. It's it's just ridiculous, to be fair. But is the Kampfpanzer 50 ton, a tier 10 German medium collectible tank, worth its price? This is what we're going to try to take a look at today. But before jumping in, I want to remind you that this tank will come in charms. And this is why, in my opinion, it's crazy expensive. Because if you buy enough crates, you will get the tank guaranteed. You will need 25 of those, which means that it's going to cost you roughly 150 euros which is a ridiculous price for such a tank. And there is a reason for this price, which is the gun. The gun is featuring 3.6 thousand DPM with one of the deadliest accuracies at tier 10, 0.31. So the reload time is great, 5.3 seconds to inflict 320 damage. So 10 more than a T62A or an Object 140. But what makes this tank really relevant in my opinion is its gun depression. Having 8 degrees on such a beast that is quite close to the ground means that you are going to be versatile on pretty much every single types of terrain. On top of that, you have pretty much good statistics everywhere because the main armor of the turret is 245 millimeters and on top of that you can climb to 60 kilometers per hour if you equip your tank properly aesthetically talking the tank is coming as soon as you get it with the koenig legendary camo that you will have to buy for 5000 gold yes you heard that right 5000 gold but in the fans of wargaming it looks really really cool Oh, and by the way, you can't use the small turret you have right there, it's just aesthetic. Now, taking a quick look at the armor profile, you will find quickly that the lower part of the hull is the weak spot, that this area is definitely well angled for such a tank, and that your turret is definitely not at rest, specifically when you use your 8 degrees of gun depression. Because here, oh boy, if you don't switch the gold shell, you can never ever penetrate. So if I had to summarize, we have something that is featuring a great mobility, a great gun and a great armor. The perfect mix for a broken tank, but is it really the case? So we have a tank that is capable of doing pretty much everything, which means that we can play it as we want. So how are we going to do that? It's pretty simple. You can either play with the mediums using tactics like side scrape, things like that, etc. Or you also have the possibility of playing with the rest of your heavies, which is something I like to do because when you take into consideration the DPM of the tank, we can do a lot before they manage to cross on the other side. So there we go, sneaking the first shell straight into the WZ. But unfortunately, as we saw, we didn't spot anyone. So it's either all the tanks went on the medium side or we have all the tanks camping on this side here. I'm not going to try anything because after all, I don't have the best, uh, the best what, the best what, the best armor. So we're not going to fight off against tank destroyers, but we can try to be sneaky a little bit. Let me try to maybe make that guy bounce my tracks. That would be awesome. Come on, sneak a shell, man. You don't want to? You don't want to sneak a shell? Yeah, take that, bitch. Boom! There we go. Sneaking a shell and hiding. This is what we call sneak pick, and this is the kind of things that you really want to do with this deck. Okay, we took one shell, but you know what? We are, we are kind of forced to stay here, unfortunately for us. There we go. Sneaking a shell, trying to get the 50M once again... Thanks to my crazy DPM, look at what I'm being able to do. I sneak two shells on the E50M, managing to sneak maybe around, um, I'm gonna say like, what? Maybe something like 600 damage or so, even maybe a little bit more. And I don't even need to move, I just need to stay here, use adrenaline and derp the hell out of them all. Take a look at this, 400 damage, it's just crazy. Ah, shit. I can't get the TVP, unfortunately, because of my reload. Come on. 
Let's wait for the object to come back. And as you can see, we are truly a DPM machine. We managed to sneak 1.4k damage on that 268 without him being able to shot back because... Let's be honest, he didn't really care about us. But at least now, we have the tank destroyers that are killed. Now we enter the second phase of the replay, which is killing that 268 and hopefully praying for the WT not to burst any shells. Whew, it seems like it worked. Okay, now where are we gonna go? I know that the TVP is probably reloading and pushing me, which means that I'm not gonna try anything stupid. I'm just gonna wait for the TVP, uh, the WT, sorry, that is probably lurking either here or here but at the same time i don't want to stay too much on my sides i really want to be able to do some damage <sighs> rip not spotted here the guy is definitely there i'm gonna try to go here to get those spotting damage i'm probably gonna take a shot in the process but you know that's how it works that's how it works nice play like a complete bot no you didn't you were just unlucky it happens sometimes ah what did I tell you, boys? What did I tell you? We got ourselves all the spotting damage, I hope. Or did we have to share with the T62A? Yeah, we did nearly 2k spotting damage and 3.7k damage, like it was nothing. And I think that this is the main advantage that this tank is featuring. The fact that when you're playing with it, you can do literally everything. And in my opinion, not only is it making a lot of credits, it's it's also possibly the greatest medium tank ever, which makes this game a little bit more pay to win. But, I mean, you have everything. So, for the first game, we focused on the abilities of the tank. Here, we're going to talk about how to play it, the strategy, plus, most importantly, the big downside. Let's evacuate it straight away. The biggest downside this tank has is that it takes quite a lot of tank uh, time to accelerate. Basically, it says you can go to 60 kilometers per hour, but it's going to take you more than 10 seconds to get to that speed, which is a little bit of a problem, specifically at the beginning of the game, if you want to play aggressive positions to be able to stink your shells the first. Now, the second thing uh, concerning the playstyle, you have a good turret armor and crazy abilities with the gun. 8 degrees of gun depression, so if you use your tank from rich lines, you should not struggle at all. Let's give it a try against the WZ, for example. He knows that he doesn't have the best penetration, neither does he have the greatest gun depression. Here, we do have the advantage over him because there is literally nothing he can do against us. We bounced him once, he missed, and we kill him. So there we go, the WZ is out of the game. Knowing that it has one of the greatest uh, penetra uh, not penetration, alpha damage for a medium, and we wrecked him like it was nothing. Now we're going to go on the second one, which is the stand B. We're taking a shot that we managed to bounce. We sneak in another one. And unfortunately, we did not manage to penetrate any HE. But as you can see, I'm trying as much as I can to only show my turret. Because when I do this, I bounce things. And bouncing is quite important in pretty much every kind of things you're playing with. Come on, sneaking in HE. An unlucky HE because we did not manage to penetrate the boy. Can I maybe penetrate the E3 in the weak spot? Yes, I can. So, we got two shells. No, no, I don't want to take that shot. Please, please, please. Be gentle with me. No, I'm going to take it. Oh, we got lucky. Okay, fellas. We have all of our life. We know for sure that... No! Oh, okay, I'm safe. Woo! We sneak a shell, and now we hide. So we are in a 4 versus 3 situation, but that Grill 15 doesn't really know what he's doing, and on top of that, he's gonna die soon. So what we're gonna do now is focusing the right targets. We enter into phase 2 mode. So how do we do that? We switch first to HE, because I'm pretty sure that this Grill is not using Spolina. We go there, we sneak a shell, we wait for the Grill to come back because he thinks that he has time to shoot before I kill him. And we kill him in the process without him being able to do anything, not even understanding what's happening to him. We sneak a shell on the 268, the 268 fails his shot, now we shoot the track to immobilize the target. And thanks to our great reload time, we send him a lot of kisses, sitting now at 3 versus 2. We are already close to 5k damage, it smells like an ace tanker, but let's be humble for the moment because we are not here yet. So what we're going to do right now is going on the Conqueror. We sneak 
one shell we're probably gonna take one but at this point who cares we are just here to do the damage thanks to our crazy dpm we kill the guy securing our third kill now there is the t57 heavy that we have to deal with and obviously as he is reloading we're gonna try to immobilize the target because even if I'm not gonna die from the shots he's gonna inf inflict here, because yes, uh, I can handle uh, three shots. Oh, unlucky, he bounced one of them in the process. Uh, am I gonna get killed still? I think so. Oh, just in time to get myself five kills and 6.6k damage. So what did we do? We showed only our turret to our opponents. After we circled and just focused on the lonely tanks, Object 268 and Grail 15. And at the end, because we had a lot of hit points and also because we wanted to do a lot of damage, we went in straight. And all of that combined allows you to get a juicy ace tanker and 6.6k damage. So yeah, definitely a worthy tank. So to summarize, this tank is great and this is pretty much why it's expensive. Is it worth that much? I don't think so because there are still great tanks at tier 10 to play with, but it adds something original specifically with its great DPM that will surprise most tanks you encounter. So hopefully you enjoyed. If that's the case, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. And personally, I'm going to see you soon for a new video. Bye.